This is Brother McCall coming back to you again today at the LRC TV station in Norton, Virginia. This is called Mountain Man Ministries, and I hope and pray that something will be said or done that will be a blessing to you and to your life. I am here with a heartfelt message of talking to you about what I can do to help you. But it's not what I can do the most that can help you. It's what God can do to help you, and he can help you far greater than I ever can or ever thought maybe I could. But I'm here as a vessel for the Lord to use me to touch your world. And I pray tonight that somehow, some way, I will be able to say something to you that will be a blessing to you. And the joy of the Lord was what I preached on last week, and we just had a a good time in the Lord and looking forward to another good time tonight. But before we start, let us pray. Father God, in Jesus Christ's mighty name, I want to look right into the camera. I want you to look through my eyes to these folks that are out there listening to this message, whether it be tonight, next week, or next year. Father, all of humanity needs a touch from God. I don't care who they are, where they're at, what kind of situation they're in. No problem is bigger than you. And I thank you, dear God, that you can handle everything that's brought to the altar of prayer. Father God, in Jesus Christ's wonderful and mighty name, I implore of thee, O Lord, my God, that you would touch every heart and every life that's looking at me through this screen today. I invite them to do this with me. Promise Promise yourself that you're going to talk to God about your needs in your life. And I promise you, I will pray with you. I will lift you up in prayer, even as I'm doing right now, that the God of eternity, the God of health and healing, the God of joy, peace, and happiness, the God of victory is ours. And I want to introduce you to John 3.16 again tonight. There is a tugging in my heart that so many people do not realize that the love of Almighty God is beyond any mortal human being understanding. I just implore of you tonight that you would be thinking about yourself, thinking of what you can do for yourself to better yourself. And this is my prayer for you tonight. Look up to the God of eternity and let God bless your life in Jesus' mighty name. Amen and amen. Now let's go to the word of the living God. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Verse 17, it says, For God sent not his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. He that believeth on him is not condemned, but he that believeth not is condemned already, because he hath not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. And I want to say unto you tonight, look up and know that your redemption draweth near. People of the world, let me encourage you to think about where life has been for you, what it can be, and what it can be in Christ. You can continue to go on in life without Christ in your life. But you will die of all men most miserable. You will never walk the shores of glory. You will never walk the streets of gold. I implore of thee tonight that you would listen to this heart of mine as I begin to allow the Holy Spirit to take over my body and to him I surrender myself unto him knowing that I cannot touch you through any means other than by television. And I pray, no matter where this goes around the world, that someone somewhere will get a hold of a message from God because he's the only one that can talk to your heart. I can say all kinds of words, but I can't talk to your heart like God can. I can encourage you through God's word to know that your redemption draweth near. We're living in a terrible time right now, church, of the living God and people of the world that do not know the Lord Jesus Christ as their personal Savior needs to come to that saving grace and the Almighty God who is available unto all. 
Look up and know that your redemption draws near. What does that mean? It means that God wants to have a one-on-one -on -one conversation with you. He wants to talk to you. He wants to love you. He wants to encourage you. He wants you to understand that no matter what you may have done in this walk of life, God is a forgiving and merciful God. I want you to understand that God is an amazing and wonderful and all-wise, all-knowing and all-powerful God. And He's capable of understanding every need that you have in life. I want to think I want you to think with me for a moment about how God loved humanity. When he first created Adam and Eve and put them in the garden, God was so pleased with them that he wanted to walk with them in the cool of the day. And I want to assure you that God wants to walk in the cool of the day with you. I want you to know God wants you to spend time in prayer with him. You cannot face God and know and understand God except through and by prayer, meditation, and fasting, and looking upon the word of the living God, growing closer to God through the word of the living God. When you cast all of your care upon the altar of the living God, he's done the same thing for you. He has put Jesus Christ, the son of the living God, out there where you can find him without any trouble. We need to recognize that the sovereign God of heaven and earth decrees and declares that I love all of my people. I want them to know that I love them. And I want them to understand that I want to walk with them in the cool of the day. In other words, he wants you to come clean with him. He wants you to understand that no matter what we've done or where we've been or what we could have done or should have done, he understands it all. I beg of you tonight, do not turn to the left, do not turn to the right, but recognize that God is God, and above him there's none no greater. Can I beg of you tonight to listen to this voice of this man that's sitting here in this TV studio tonight, recognizing that the sovereign God of heaven and earth is crying out to people, possibly all over the world tonight through this TV channel. I don't know how far it goes, but I go. I pray that it goes to some heart that will surrender and say, God, the words that this man has spoken has convicted my heart and I realize that I'm in sin and that I need to be saved. I need to be dedicated to the true, the real, and the living God. I want to say unto you tonight, if you make a decision for the Lord Jesus Christ tonight, it's the greatest decision you'll ever make. I want you to know when you surrender your heart and life to the Lord, you're going to please the great I am. And I'm going to tell you, you're going to walk in a way that you've never walked before. It will be like you'll be eating out of a golden spoon. Every which way you turn, the blessings of God will overtake you and overshadow you and bless your lives. I'm not trying to tell you that God is a grocery store to go to, but I'm trying to tell you that the mercies and grace of God will teach you and show you and lead you and help you along the pathway of life to change you from being a sin and vile, ungodly person to a person that is a true and righteous person of Almighty God. And there's an old saying, go, oh, that there is in this world going around that says you can catch more bees with honey than you can with vinegar. I'm here to tell you, God's got more things that's sweeter than honey in the honeycomb. But even in that, the Bible says, come and taste of him and see if he's not sweeter than honey in the honeycomb. I'm here to tell you, I used to be a beekeeper. I know how wonderful it is to see the comb full of the golden liquid that they have created and put together. And it's a very wonderful, savory taste of the mouth. I want you to know that God's God even greater than that, waiting upon you if you will rest recognize that there is a sovereign God that wants to wrap his arms around you and hold you in his arms and walk with you in the cool of the day. I'm here to tell you to stop listening to the voice of evil. 
the third voice of this world is taking people to hell every day. I want you to understand that every person that's a born again child of God needs to be praying for America. I mean to tell you, you need to be praying earnestly and crying out to God. Let the love of the living God flow through me that I can touch someone else's life because the world and all of its chaotic state is taking people out. The people that's crossing over the southern border is bringing the devil's poison right into America by the truckload, so to speak. And I'm here to tell you, we're living in the end times as far as I can tell. And I'm here to tell you there is a way out. There is an escape way from the evils of this world. When you surrender to God and acknowledge the God of heaven and earth as the sovereign God, the God who created the heavens and the earth, the one who can make a way where there seems no way to be, I can assure you that God is God and above him there's none no greater. And I can assure you on the voice of my own testimony and by the word of the living God, I am an overcomer. I can trust the true, the real, and the living God to make a way where there seems no way to be. I'm here to tell you on the authority of God's word, you need to turn from sin and all of the ungodliness of this walk of life and give your heart and life to Jesus right now. And I'm going to tell you a pitiful story in a moment. But I want you to know, if God intervenes, it won't happen. But if he don't, and the little baby that I'm about to tell you about is laying in a Johnson City hospital right now, only six months old, don't know whether it's going to live or die. And let me tell you, if you do not know the Lord Jesus Christ, and if you are of a mind that's able to know the difference between right and wrong, you're going to be responsible for answering to God. That little baby don't know that it's ever done anything wrong, and it hasn't really because it doesn't know what wrong and right is. But the Lord may take it home tonight. It may not. It may stay. It may live. It may go on through life and enjoy a beautiful life because God knows how to touch and it would be my great pleasure to tell you next week that the little fellow survived and he's still doing good. I don't know what may be the outcome of it, but I'm here to tell you life here on earth is precious, but life eternal is more precious than you can ever put a name on. But I'm here to tell you to walk with God. You've got to walk through this world first, and you've got to enter in to the blessings of Almighty God and enter into the joy of the salvation that Jesus brought upon the cross of Calvary. I want you to know God is God, and above him there's none no greater. And I want you to know, if you won't surrender, you may lose the child as well. I'm not saying God is a vengeful, angry God. No, I'm not. But I'm here to tell you, the Bible says that heaven will have its glorious ways, and there will be people lifted off of this world when the rapture or the catching away of the church takes place. There's nobody going to stop them that are true and righteous. And to all of them that are professing to be true and righteous and are not, will be left behind. And this is a warning to you. If you're not truly where you belong with God, please humble yourself. Ask God to show you anything that is not pleasing in His sight. Do not look to the left nor to the right, but look straight ahead towards the mark of the high calling that is in Christ Jesus. Jesus set a pure and perfect way before us. He never failed the Father in any kind of way. And I know you have failed him. I know that because I'm human just like you. And I'll be the first one to tell you that I know that I have failed him. But I've also cried out and asked for forgiveness. Where are you at tonight? Are you thinking about eternity 
Or have you ever thought about eternity? Should you think about eternity? Absolutely. Absolutely beyond all shadow of doubt. I want you to think about the power of Almighty God that can help you in all kinds of ways. There are so many different things, and I ask you tonight, backing up what I've just talked about as far as the Bible and the Word of the living God as far as Jesus was concerned and that He is the Savior of this world, I want to now ask you these few questions. What have I got to be thankful for? Have I got anything to be thankful for? Let's examine a few things. I woke up this morning. I'm still breathing. I was able to eat and have a meal or two today. Probably have another one before the night's over with. And by the help and grace of Almighty God, I will lay my head down to rest after a while. And I've had all kinds of other things take place today in my life. I want you to just simply take time out to think about God in all of His greatness, all of His mercy, all of His kindness. I want you to think about what He has done for you already. And I'm going to tell you, don't say that you've done all this on your own. I assure you that it's not the case. God always watches over His children, desiring to bless them and to bring the best of life to you. And if you're living high on the hog, as the old saying goes, then know that God's truly been watching over you. But you know what? When God blesses mightily, He also wants you to share mightily. He wants you to share most of all the love of the living God. I'm here to tell you tonight that I could not have been given a better subject to preach on tonight than about the loving, wonderful grace of Almighty God that is beyond fathom. It is beyond depth. It is beyond height. It is beyond left to right. You can't reach around God's grace and mercy. There's no way. But it's still here. I want you to understand that God has his merciful hand upon America. And I know a lot of people are preaching gloom and doom and despair. But I'm here to tell you what tomorrow may bring, God only knows. And I'm going to tell you, if you'll put two words together in your heart and focus on them and read and pray and study about them, you will make heaven your home one day. One is love. The other is trust. If you trust, you're going to love. If you love, you're going to trust Almighty God because you can't do it without Him. You can do all kinds of things you think you can in the flesh, but you know what? I've done been down that road a lot of places and a lot of things have gone on in my life, but I'm here to tell you, I cannot change things that are bigger than I am. Neither can you, but I want you to understand that there's a merciful God in heaven above who cares about you and wants to bless you, to heal you and to deliver you from any and all situations. I visited with a man today that I know, and I'm considering at least a thought in my mind, is he really saved or is he really not? In my opinion, he isn't. But my opinion doesn't matter. It's what's in that person's heart when they leave this walk of life. If they're saved by the marvelous grace of God at any point between now and the day that they're called out of this walk of life, that's what's going to judge what's going to happen on Judgment Day. I want you to understand that if everything is good and wonderful for you in life, you are a blessed and wonderful person. I want to know if you're giving God praise for everything that He's already done for you. 
if you're not, shame on you. Because God wants to walk in the cool of the day with you. He wants to bless you. He wants to talk to you. He wants to have fellowship with you. He wants to drive away the enemy. He wants to see you blessed. He wants to see you healed, set free, and delivered from any and all bondage in this walk of life. Why can you not understand that it's time to turn from our evil and wicked ways and say, God, we need a revival in America. We need a move of God in America and around the world. Children out there, listen to me. Time is growing close. It does appear. But I don't know how to judge that because it's only in the hands of Almighty God. Even Jesus himself said, I don't know what the Father's will is when he will ask me to step out on the clouds of glory and the trumpet will sound and the dead in Christ shall rise and them that which are alive and remain shall be caught up to meet the Lord in the air. Are you going to be ready to meet the Lord in the air? Should time run out for us? Should time run out for each and every one of us? Before the rapture comes, it's who we are in the Lord on a day-by-day -day basis. God wants to fellowship with you. He does not want to look at you as if you are an adopted child that has no feelings, no heart, no desire to walk with him. He wants to know you as his own child, son or daughter. I want you to understand that God is a merciful and loving and caring and wonderful God. I want you to understand that the enemy is out there seeking someone he may devour today. Will it be you? I pray not. Because you might be the next one ever come along and take my place. I don't know who will take my place, but I know God said, when things is over, wound up and over with, he said, there'll be faithful people left upon the earth. Even if I'm gone, if I live another 10 or 15, 20 or 25 or 50 years, or even two or 300 years, is that possible? You better believe it is. If you go back in the book of Genesis and look, there was people that lived 120, 250, 350, 450, even all the way up to 969. And if you don't believe that, then you don't believe the Word of God. God did all of that to show humanity that He is in control of each and every aspect of our life. If we want something from God, why not go to God in prayer and believe that He's able to help you shower down upon you the rich and wonderful blessings of Almighty God? Count your blessings today. Acknowledge to God tonight before you go to bed tonight. Just stop and have a little talk with Jesus tonight. Go to God in prayer tonight before you lay your head down. And I want to ask you to say, God, send a revival upon America. And Lord, most of all, help America to stay free in the Lord able to worship the Lord in spirit and in truth. You know, they're actually talking about trying to take our Bibles away from us. They're talking about taking our gun rights away from us. What else are they going to do next? What about the gender thing that's going on in America today? God did not create boys and men to be women. It is an abomination in the sight of Almighty God. And if you still got a sound mind and focused upon yourself as a man or a woman, whatever you may be, and you know that you are who you are, then you've got something going on that some of the people of this world don't know about. They are looking at the world and believing that they can commit all kinds of abominable sin and do what they want to do, and they can do it and not care a thing about what you think about it or what you do or say about it. I'm here to tell you in America, we have the law of the free speech. I know this, and I say unto all those that's walking in the trans transgender mess that you better turn from your evil and wicked way because there's a judgment of God coming upon America and around the world. 
I want you to know that God loves you and cares about you, and he wants you to stop thinking about what the woke situation and the transgender walk is and look to the word of the living God and let the word of the living God embrace you and you embrace it and walk holy and upright before an almighty God. If you look upon these things and no one realize the time that we're living in, it's spoken of in the Bible. I want you to think about Sodom and Gomorrah. They were destroyed. The cities that they were in, they were burned to ashes. What is America going to do with America and the transgender movement? The first thing he's going to do is warn you, just like I am tonight. Turn from your bad and evil ways to the true, the real, and the living God. I want you to understand, God is a forgiving God. He's not mad at you, but he's mad at the devil for what he's tried to do to humanity. He's perverting everything that God created and made perfect in the Garden of Eden. And I want you to understand, God still loves humanity, even though he repented of making man. But I'm here to tell you tonight, God's grace and mercy is beyond any reaching point that you could ever try to go to. Acknowledge the sovereign God tonight and say, God, if there's any chance, any hope of me becoming a child of God, lead me down the right path. And I assure you on the experiences that I've had and upon the authority of God's word, he will help you. I want to read you a couple of more scriptures. And this one is the golden rule. <clears throat> Matthew chapter 7, verse 12. Therefore all things whatsoever you would that men should do to you, do you even so to them, for this is the law and the prophets. We have a choice to live a good life, to do good unto others, and we can enjoy that because God's pleased with it. He set this rule in order. But this is what I'm trying to tell you. You can't live by the standards of the world and be blessed of God. God is not in the standards of the world. He's in his own standard. He has set up his own standard. The Bible says that the word of the living God was written and decreed upon the altar of Almighty God and it will not change, and nobody will ever take it off of the altar of God, and this is what we will be judged out of, the word of the living God. Let me read you a couple more. There are two ways in life. It says, enter ye in at the straight gate. Enter ye in at the straight gate, and that straight gate is named Jesus. For wide is the gate, and broad is the way that leadeth to destruction. Many there be which go in thereat. Because straight is the gate, and narrow is the way which leadeth unto life. And few there be that find it. Listen to me, brothers and sisters out there in the world and in the body of Christ. This is Mountain Man Ministries, Brother McConnell and Ernie Benko. Saying good night and God bless until we meet together again. And may the richness and the mercies and grace of Almighty God touch you and keep you safe throughout the week. God bless and good night.